Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this month's Carteret Series webinars hosted by the Georgia Library Association. I'm Kimberly Boyd at Bernal University and my fellow planners are Casey Long at Agnes Scott College and Ashley Dupuis at Kennesaw State University. This webinar series highlights trends, innovations, and best practices in libraries. Registration is free and open to anyone, anywhere. Topics are chosen to be of interest to employees of all library types, and each session is approved for one Georgia Continuing Education Hour. The Carteret Series webinars are sponsored by the Georgia Library Association. If you live in Georgia but aren't a member, we strongly encourage you to join GLA. Your membership shows much appreciated support for these webinars and for the Georgia Library community as a whole. We would also like to thank Georgia Public Library Service for graciously allowing us the use of their software to host this webinar. Before I introduce you to the presenter, I'd like to tell you a few technical things. We have disabled the microphone, whiteboard, and Q&A tools, so please type your questions into the chat box. We will note your questions and include them in our Q&A session with the panelists at the end of the presentation. Please also note we have changed the way that we are providing documentation for CE credit. The email that you receive after the webinar will include a link to a PDF that will serve as your attendance certificate. If at any point you lose audio, log out and log back in again. Also make sure that you click yes when asked to join the integrated voice conference. We are recording this session and that this recording, as well as our presenter slides, will be available on our website later in the week. Rachel Evans is a web coordinator and digital media specialist at the University of Georgia Alexander Campbell King Law Library. Her primary responsibility as part of the information technology team is maintaining the law school's website. She also contributes to library instruction, ranging from technology-centered sessions to video tutorial creation and in archiving in the law school repository Digital Commons, assembling the library's monthly newsletter, and contributing to the library's public relations and web teams. Evans has presented instructional technology and web design related sessions at local, state, and regional conferences, and has also been published in the National Professional Magazine, Computers and Libraries. And now, I, Kanban, can you a librarian's introduction to Kanban Flow. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. I am muted. Excellent. Um, so to begin, uh, I wanted to start out with a survey question just to see of all of you uh, in attendance out there, uh, how many of you are using a um, something like Kanban Flow or uh, any kind of to-do list for that matter. Um, so I want to start out with our poll. And it looks like they've already got the poll pulled up on the side. Um, so for task management at work, uh, please select any that apply to you. Do you use paper to-do lists or checklists, uh, workflow software, um, a day planner, uh, calendar reminders, and that would be like Outlook, for example, or any other um, sort of email-based calendar reminder, whiteboards, sticky notes, bulletin boards, um, colored highlighters to color code your priorities. Uh, do you use an app on your phone or your tablet? And again, um, they've told me you can check more than one. So check as many as apply to you. And it looks like we have about uh, 40, 20, 20 seconds left, 10 seconds left. So submit your answers. And I just want to get a feel for how many of you are using uh, something similar to what I'm about to talk about, or if you don't use anything right now. All right, it says the poll has ended. So let me um, make sure I know how to get the results. <laughs> there we go, there are our results. 
so it looks like the majority of you are very similar to me. Um, before I started using Kanban, I um, was a stickler for paper to-do lists. I went through so many paper to-do lists. I can't even tell you how many stacks of to-do lists I would go through. And this has just been something that um, I started doing in college just to keep up with my priorities and it carried over into my career and it was so hard to let go of and it was the only way that I knew how to keep up with things. In addition to that, for meetings or, or things that had deadlines, I would use my email um, Outlook work calendar to put things on to uh, remind me of appointments or if I had a specific deadline at a specific time or day um, and I was using so I was using a combination of those two things and it looks like the majority of you are also doing those two things um, it doesn't look like very many of you 15 out of 169 are using a workflow software um, and it looks like a, a, a slightly bigger portion are using like a tablet app um, and we've got some people using sticky notes so I, I was also pretty bad about my sticky notes that I would I would actually double up on some things on my to-do list and a sticky note if something was extremely important and I didn't want to forget so before I get too far into what we're doing we've already done a survey and I just wanted to give you a, a short outline of what I'm going to cover um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Kanban is and give you a, a small history about it and the basics of using this method. And then um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I ditched uh, paper to-do lists in favor of using a digital form of a to-do list. Um, specifically kanbanflow.com is what I use. And if any of you, uh, while I'm talking, if you would like to um, visit uh, kanbanflow.com, you're welcome to, you know, um, pull that up while I'm speaking and dive in and that might uh, open up some questions for me to answer at the end as well. And it looks like they just shared the link for that, so feel free to, to click on that. Um, I also am going to uh, give examples using my own board so you can see um, what Kanban flow digital board looks like and you can um, sort of visualize how I'm using it and that'll be a good jumping point for me to talk about the features of the program. And then at the very end, um, assuming that we have time left before questions, I'm going to jump out. Um, and show you what my board is uh, and do some screen sharing so that you can all see my board. And I'll use that while I'm answering your questions. So if you have specific questions about something that I talked about or just about something that you see on my board, then I can actually show you how to do it or how to use it. So let's get started. Um, just a little bit of history about Kanban. Uh, the word itself means sign or billboard in Japanese and it was invented um, in the 1940s, Toyota manufacturing used this method. Um, they were the first to use this method to increase their efficiency in their um, product lines. So um, since then, you know, a lot of time has passed since then, a lot of people have picked this up. Um, industries that are using it now, uh, it's really popular in software development for human resources teams and for marketing teams. And a lot of people in leadership use it. Um, so, you know, really it can apply to so many different types of work and I have found it especially, um, especially helpful in the library setting. And I was actually introduced to it by my uh, a current law library director um, and she and the other librarians had been using it for some time and so she first told me about it a couple of years ago and I haven't stopped using it since. I love it that much. <laughs> it's made such a difference um, to go from paper list to this and I'm going to tell you why. So um, what is a Kanban board? Uh, the simplest board uh, consists of a to-do column, an in-progress column, and a done column. And these are columns that you're going to sort your tasks into. Um, and again, that's the simple sort of starting point. You'll see that my board isn't exactly like that. Um, and a lot of people, I'll show you some examples in just a moment where you can see um, how some people are using physical boards and changing the names of the columns. They have more columns going um, and they'll, you know, make it specific to the type of work that they do. So the, the big key to uh, 
a Kanban board working for you is the in progress column. What you want to do is limit that in progress um, number of tasks that you have going at one time. Um, so one reason that I love Kanban flow and I'll, I'll reiterate this later, but um, this application automatically limits the number of items that you have going. It'll give you a red flag at the top if you have too many items going at one time and you're in progress. You can change that limit. So if you do work better multitasking with three to five, you know, things at a time, you could have that. Or if you only want to do two at a time, you can set that for yourself as well to kind of keep yourself in check. Um, and so the key is that you are not overly multitasking and that way you can really focus on something and start getting things done because a lot of us i'm i i'm one of the most guilty parties at uh, attempting to do more than one thing at, at a time and thinking that i can you know split up my focus like that and really um i end up getting a lot more done when i can sit down and just focus on specific tasks um, so that's one way that the kanban board has really helped me so you know i mentioned um Kanban, it started out in the 40s. This is a technique that began as a sort of a physical whiteboard where you would separate items um, using a lot of people use sticky notes. Um, so before I get into Kanbanflow.com and that that specific application, I wanted to jump out and do a short screen share with you. And just show you. Um, what it looks like. So this is my Kanban board. And this is an example of a physical Kanban board. This would be this is a whiteboard. You can see they have um, this actually has five columns going and you can see the titles and how they have different colored sticky notes for things that are moving across the columns until they reach the final column, which is done. This would be your simplest physical version of a Kanban board. So you have your to do, doing or in progress, and then you're done. Here's another more complicated board that you can see. Um, they've got some big goals identified on the far left, and then they have four major columns. They have their backlog or sort of their rainy day list. Then they have their to do, which is generally what you aim to do in that day. Then you've got your WIP, which is your work in progress. And then finally, you have your done. And you see that far to the right, they have a lot done. <laughs> and here's one more example. Uh, here they have a few more columns than just the main three. We've got five. So they're going from to do to in progress to ready for Q&A, in Q&A, and then validated. So I'm going to jump out back out to the slides. And I just want to tell you a little bit about why I chose to go with Kanban flow. I've already mentioned to you that um, my library director introduced this to me a couple years ago. Um, she and the other law librarians, uh, you'll see an example at the very end of my slides where I show you what a board that they collaboratively use looks like. Um, and this is a great tool for people working in teams. Even though I wasn't working in teams, um, she knew that I had just come back from maternity leave. And it's my first child. And I, I used to feel like I was pretty on top of things, but I quickly found myself uh, losing track of my to-do list, forgetting to reprioritize my list, starting a list at home because I was working from home a lot when I first came back to work. And um, it became really hard to stick to the method that I had always used. So when she told me about this, I thought, this, this is the solution for me. And now that I use it, um, I can't believe that I ever used paper to-do lists. It, is, it makes such a difference. Um, one thing that I really, really, really like about it is being able to go back in time in my done column and review what I've done in the past few weeks. And this works really well when you go into a meeting with your supervisor or with your team, um, or if you're just working on your annual review and you're trying to figure out what were your big accomplishments or where did you spend your mo the most of amount of time um, on any given 
week, you know, or even in a month, you can really get a good visual of, okay, well, I did a lot of circulation stuff this week, or I did a lot of reference that week, and how your time is really adding up. And that can really help um, when you're reviewing your job descriptions as well. So there are a lot of benefits to this beyond just the day-to-day -day advantages that I feel like I get from it. So I wanted to give an example um, of what many of you who are listening may be doing. A lot of us, I've worked in some small libraries before, um, and even now that I'm in a larger library, uh, I still am one of those people, like, like many of you, your library staff, who wear many, many hats, and we do so many different things. So even if you're in the circulation department, um, that doesn't mean that you're not answering reference questions when there's not a reference librarian present. And that doesn't mean you're not, um, you know, checking in holds or uh, answering IT questions uh, and other computer questions for people. Um, so you may be doing so many different things. Marketing for the library, you may not have a specific person who does that, and a lot of you may be sharing those responsibilities. Um, so there's so many things that we work on, and, which is one reason why I feel like Kanban Flow is a, a great tool for librarians, because there are a lot of careers out there that really focus um, their jobs. Maybe they do specific tasks, and that's they do it over and over every day, but, but we are a really our careers, we do so many different things. Um, every day we're, do, we're, we're doing so many different things. And it can be really difficult um, to know what you've been working on longer, what you need to prioritize, and to be able to uh, organize those thoughts can make a huge difference in how you get things done. So um, paper versus digital, these are just a just a quick sort of comparison um, why I feel like the digital has helped me. My desk is so much cleaner, <laughs> infinitely cleaner. Um, some items on my list no longer get lost in the, the huge, you know, checklist that I used to do. I can quickly uh, reorganize items from one column to the next. Um, I feel like I'm saving some trees a little bit. I mean, I'm not I'm not going through nearly as much paper as I used to. I still take notepads and things to meetings. Um, but speaking of meetings, another thing that I do in addition to keeping notes in paper in meetings that I just like I always did, I also usually have my phone or a tablet with me. So I'll keep my Kanban board pulled up and often, especially certain meetings, you'll go and you'll be assigned something. And this happens to me so much, I'll be assigned something in a meeting, and even if I wrote it down, that doesn't mean it's going to make it to my list. So I love that my Kanban board is always with me on my phone or whatever device I have with me, and I can add that item to my, to my list, and I know that I'm not going to forget about it. I can go ahead and put it in my to-do column. So it's not based on location. You can access it anywhere that you uh, have wireless access or you know if you have your phone you have your 3g going or whatever you'll be able to um you'll be able to edit your board and add things to it so here is a screenshot of my board i know i showed it to you a few minutes ago but um i just wanted to um point out a few of the things that I use. You can see that um, my board, I use four columns. I always have a to-do, which is kind of an ongoing list. It, it's sort of become sort of a rainy day list. It's like my backlog of items that need to be done, but they're not necessarily a priority. Due today is um, my items that have sort of an upcoming deadline. I'll pull things in there that I really want to get accomplished today. It doesn't always mean that they get accomplished in that day, but at the beginning of every work day, I try to sort through and add the items um, that I really want to finish before the end of a day. And then the in progress are the things that I am actually working on. Um, a lot of times I will pull at least three or four things in there, and I'll begin on one thing and pick up on another item. But as long as it's in progress, in my in progress column, I know that I've started it and I need to finish it before I add new things to my list. And you can see up next to in progress, there's two numbers with a slash. So it shows that I have two items out of a possible five in my in progress. So I keep my limit at five because sometimes I do have a lot of tasks going on at once, but that keeps me from having too much at one time. And again, as I mentioned before, you can 
you can set that limit for yourself. So if you only feel comfortable having two things going at once, you can um, make sure your board doesn't allow you to drag more over than you're comfortable with. And then I have my done column and you can see there's a scroll bar to the far right where you can um, scroll back in time and you can see the previous day that I took the screen capture would have been a Friday, February, February 10th. So it will scroll back in time and tell you what day and you can see what day and time you've accomplished things. And it's just a good overview of everything that you've finished. Another feature um, that I'd like to point out, if you work really well with a lot of columns, you are able to collapse columns. So if you click the plus sign, um, you would be able to add a new item, but you can also sort of hide a column if you don't want to see too many at one time. So if you just wanted to see one column at a time, and that's what you're focused on, you can hide the other three. You see I have four colors going. There are several colors to choose from. You could have more depending on how many different types you do. So as a web coordinator who also works in and for the library, I set most of my tasks um, to web. That's my default color because the majority of, of things that I do during the day, they're typically web related tasks. So anytime I create a new task, it's going to be that unless I select color and you can see this is the new task window and I can select the color to change it to library or graphics, docs, and media. Um, that's if I'm doing anything with video or if I'm editing a photo for the website or for the library or even creating a flyer. And then I also have personal and I use that for things like cleaning up my desk <laughs> or um, sorting through, you know, my computer desktop to try and clean that up. Um, I'll also put things like review my job description or submit my leave forms. I'll do a lot of things like that and I'll put them as personal. They're, they're work related, they belong on my work board, but they don't necessarily fall into my regular tasks. Um, so I've got this as my personal tasks. There's a few other things I'd like to note. In your new task uh, box, you'll see this sort of big white box area right here. Um, this is for a description. A lot of times since I'm working on the web, I'll paste the web link in for whatever web page the update needs to go to. Um, that can be helpful. You also see responsible. Um, responsible will allow you to collaborate with other people. So if you're sharing a work board, you, and I was sharing this with, say, my coworker, I would be able to choose their name if I wanted to assign them a task that I had added or if we wanted to work together on that task. Uh, dates and deadlines. I'm going to get into the specifics of that, but one thing I love about Kanban Flow is that I can create an item and assign it a date and a deadline, even specific to the time of day, so that if there's something that I need to make sure I do not forget about, it will automatically send me an email. Um, so I'll get an email notification that says, you know, if you're not looking at your board right now, this, this item is due, you need to make sure you do it. Um, so that can be really helpful if you have some things that are maybe in the future, they're not urgent right now, but you want to make sure you don't forget about it later. Some other things that are helpful, um, your recurring tasks. This is one that I use. I have a couple of tasks that I'm supposed to do every single day. They don't take long, but it's easy in the course of the day to forget about them. So, um, for example, I change the backup tape for the library records. So I go into the server room and actually eject a physical tape. Uh, and put in a new one every single day. So this is a recurring task that every single workday I want to make sure that I get a reminder to do it if I haven't already done so. And as soon as I do it, I'll drag that item across. So you can see where it says FTP uh, gavel records and I've also got change gavel backup tape. Those are my two recurring tasks that I do every day. And as soon as I finish it, I drag it into my done pile and it automatically goes back to the column and recreates that task for the next day. And it automatically has the due date of the next business day. Um, so those are things that you can go in and you can set up if there are things that you need to remember to do. You can put an end date as well. I usually set it up at the beginning of a semester since we're an academic library. And uh, my end date is usually right before Christmas break. And then I'll reset it the next semester. 
Um, subtasks, this is another thing that I love. At the top right over here in my done column, you can see an example of what a task with subtasks looks like. So this is a recurring task I have set up with a deadline that also has subtasks. So every day when I begin to do this task, I can go through and check the boxes. And there are some, some people, they don't really need that. Um, I don't use it for all tasks. I only use it for tasks where I have several items um, that I know needed to be accomplished before I can really say that's done. So some of your uh, very specific tasks where you have lots of little pieces to the puzzle, um, that's a good feature to use, especially if you're like me and you like checking off checkboxes. Um, and I've already talked to you about scrolling back in time. That's something that I really, really love about Kanban flow. So I mentioned just a minute ago about recurring tasks and dates and deadlines. This is a screenshot of when you go to create a new task, um, what it looks like when you go to set a date or a recurring task. So it's got this very nice pop-up calendar feature for your start date and for your end date if you choose to have one you don't have to put an end date there's also a time um, a target column tells you it tells kanban flow um, where that item needs to be when it's considered done so you could set your target column to be i need this in progress by tomorrow at 2 p.m and not necessarily done but just in progress or whatever the name of your column is um, when you choose to repeat it, that's what sets the recurring task, and it gives you the option of daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly, so you can set up reminders well in advance. Um, this is an example, just a, a, an example task that shows you you can select just a few days a week. Let's say you, um, you need to remember to change the copy paper only on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that's your responsibility on just those days of the week. You could set this reminder and it would repeat that task and create it for you until you tell it to stop. Um, so that's just a little bit about setting the dates and deadlines. I just wanted to give you an actual visual for what that looks like. And I mentioned before, if you ever pass a deadline, it will tell you that you haven't, um, you haven't done this yet by emailing you a reminder. And I really love that feature. Here's a, a closer inspection of some subtasks. So this was a list of, on the website, I got a, a task the other day where they wanted me to update um, some course listings. So these are specific jury numbers. There's some details in there. Um, really tiny tasks, just change the, the credit hours from three to two <laughs> or change the title of a course. Um, but, you know, even though it's, it's really quick and easy, uh, I got it early in the day, didn't have time to do it that, at that moment. So um, it was much easier for me to create the task so I didn't forget it. I can copy and paste into one subtask. And um, if it's all in separate lines in your document or in your email and you paste it in, it will create the subtask list for you. So you don't actually have to type these in. And I do this so much. I'll copy and paste it from the email from the person. I put it in and it creates the three things for me, even though I paste it into one line. It's, it's like magic. <laughs> so um, that's one way that I just... I can sort of save time in using these. Of course, you can manually type them in yourself if you want to, but I find that copying and pasting is really, really great. And I can go through and check them off. Um, the other thing, when you create subtasks, unless it is in your in-progress pile, it is not going to expand it, so it won't take up a ton of room. And once it's in your done pile, it will collapse the task so that it just looks like any other task, it doesn't show the huge list of items unless you click on it to reveal it. Um, so don't think, oh no, I created a subtask going to take up all the space on my board. Uh, you can always show, hide, you know, collapse that task so that it doesn't take up a lot of space. Organizing by columns. Um, you know, I've already mentioned that the basic columns that most people use with this method are to do, in progress, and done. But you can change the names of these columns in Kanban flow. You can add more columns if you want. Uh, here's an, a, a screen capture of what it looks like when you go to edit your column settings. So you would go to the top right hand corner if you happen to be in Kanban flow right now. Um, next to your name, there's a button called administration. You choose that and it'll give you a few options. 
you're going to want to select columns and there you will be able to edit the name of a column change the order of your columns um, if you want to change the the arrangement of them and you can also add or delete columns just a couple of tips um, these are some things that other people do a lot of people like to have an ideas or a rainy day column i think i mentioned that before uh, my general to do has kind of turned into a rainy day column um, so I keep my to do and my do today sort of separately my to do is not prioritized at all and my do today is what I prioritize first thing in the morning when I come in or you know throughout the day as I receive new tasks and need to rearrange things the only things that are really essential to getting this done is in progress and done and um, the board that I mentioned that the law librarians at UGA law library use collaboratively when they're getting research requests done is one of those boards where they only use in progress and done um, they start things and they end things and that's how they work and it works really well for them and I'll show you a screen capture of that soon I highly highly recommend like I said setting a pretty low limit on your in-progress column because that's how you're going to get things done. Uh, customizing with color labels. This is something I want to touch on. I, I mentioned it a little before and you can you can see here how many colors I have disabled and how many I'm using. So I really only use four um, and I don't use personal very much. You always want to set a default. So whatever the type of task that you're doing the most, um, you know, the majority of your tasks that you create that'll be your default so when you when you go to create a task it'll automatically be that color unless you change it to something else and by assigning different colors this gives us um, more of a heads up on visually glancing at our board and knowing where we're spending our time or where our priorities should be um, i find this so useful when i can just kind of glance over at my board I, I usually keep, you may not all have two screens, but I have a lot of computer screens at my workstation. And so I keep one screen dedicated to my Kanban board and my email, and I can just toggle between the two. So at any given time, I can just look over at my board, reprioritize or shift my priorities around from the columns and view what I need to work on next. Um, and again, I can't say enough how much I love being able to scroll back in time and see what I've got going on. This has come in handy um, with talks between me and my supervisor. Um, we regularly have team meetings every couple of weeks um, and we also have web team meetings so I can bring, I can look at my list and I can say, okay, I need to report what I've done for the web or I need to report what I've done for the library. And it's very easy using the colors to visually see which those items are and to you know, pull those items out, copy and paste them and make a short report for whatever team I'm reporting to um, or talking to my supervisor and telling him, okay, well, this particular department or this part of my work is taking up a lot more time than you told me to spend on it. What can we do about that? And he can do some damage control there. Um, so it, there's there's so many benefits to this. I, I could go on and on. <laughs> One extra feature that is built in to KanbanFlow.com is the Pomodoro timer. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the Pomodoro technique. This is a, a separate technique that they've kind of rolled into Kanban Flow uh, to help you, you know, manage your tasks even better. And this this goes for getting full focus on projects. So um, the Pomodoro technique, you can Google that. There's a great video that I've put a link to here, and I think they're gonna share a link to it over, uh, over here in uh, the chat. But you can look at this YouTube video that I provided the link for, there it is. <laughs> and um, it, it, very, it does a very good job of explaining the Pomodoro technique in just a couple minutes. Um, so this was invented in the 1980s. It's popular because it allows you to really focus on a task. Um, and again, this is along the lines of you want to cut down on your multitasking and start really focusing on a project so you can get it done. So uh, the, the basic thinking is 25 minutes at a time, you're going to work on one thing. And between every 25 minute stretch, you're going to give yourself a short break. 
usually five minutes, then another 25 minutes you work, then five minutes break, and then you, uh, after so many pomodoros or 25 minute stretches of work, you reward yourself with a longer break. And in theory, keeping your focus like this and giving yourself little, little rewards uh, along the way will allow you to get more accomplished faster than if you say work straight through and weren't keeping track of the time or you're trying to do so many different things at once. So just to focus on this and uh, in case you're curious about the, the visual over to the right, uh, the original Pomodoro technique used a kitchen timer. So um, sort of the visual for the Pomodoro technique and method is um, the little red tomato kitchen timer where you would set it to 25 minutes and that's how you would keep track of your time. Um, so that's where that comes from. And you could do this with a regular kitchen timer or just the timer on your phone or whatever you have on hand. But it's great that it's integrated into Kanban flow so you can take advantage of everything that I've already mentioned in addition to keeping track of how much time you're spending on your work exactly. Um, so the basics, this is breaking it down into just six steps. Choose a task, set your timer for 25 minutes, uh, take a break for five minutes after your first Pomodoro, restart your timer, work again, repeat these steps until you have four Pomodoros completed. At the end, you reward yourself with a longer break, 15 minutes or whatever you choose, and then you start it again. Here is what the Pomodoro timer looks like. Um, you'll find the timer if you're looking at a Kanban flow board. It's at the bottom left corner. There's a little button that says timer, has a little stopwatch sort of uh, icon. And um, that's where you can set up your timer settings. So when you open the timer, it gives you some options. If you click on the settings button, you'll see this, um, this box that I have enlarged over here for you. And uh, it allows you to set your default work time, your short break time, your long break time, and your interval. So if you need a break every fourth break or every you know, eighth break, you can set that up. Um, if 25 minutes isn't good for you, if you prefer to work in 40 minutes, for example, you can do that. So there's a lot of customization here, just like with everything in the Kanban uh, flow application. Um, but I really do like using this timer. I don't use it for everything. I only use it for those tasks where I feel like if I don't use it, I'll get really bogged down. Um, this works really, really great for those really long, bigger projects where you may be working on it for days. And otherwise, I would look at my Kanban board and say, wow, it looks like I didn't get anything done today. <laughs> um, but if you're keeping track of your time, you can say, okay, well, it, it looks that way, but based on my Pomodoros, I've actually spent four hours on this task. So I just know that it's a bigger project. I don't need to uh, beat myself up over only working on one item. This is just a really, really big project. And I can show that to my supervisor or to whoever else um, I'm working with. It will have some alarm ticking sounds. Uh, some people, you know, that may cause anxiety for you. You can either choose to not have your headphones on, not have your audio going, or you can customize those sounds um, so that you don't have some ticking time bomb while you're working because that may, you know, work against you instead of for you. Um, and if you prefer something less strict, uh, over here where it says timer in the bottom left, just above it, there's actually a stopwatch where you can use a manual timer and actually manually log how much time you're spending on things if you want something that, you know, like I said, causes you a little less stress while you're working. And so lastly, uh, I just want to mention a couple of things about um, collaboration. I told you I was going to show you a screen capture of the law librarian's collaborative board, and here it is. Um, so over here on the left, you'll see that they have two columns. This is all they use, in progress and done. Um, you can see this is a collaborative board because you will notice the different people's uh, faces where they've been assigned specific tasks. So you can see that different librarians icons will appear and reappear. Um, and so this is how they work. They'll add a lot of tasks to the in progress. Most of them don't have anybody assigned. And then when somebody chooses to do it or gets assigned that item, 
um, a new face will appear. And when they finish, they'll drag it to done. And you can see there are a lot of different dates appearing here where different people are getting things accomplished on you know, different time frames. And this helps them keep up with their research requests and reference requests and things like that. So it's a great way to collaborate. Um, and then just in case you delete items, sometimes you create a lot of ideas or you create a task and you don't actually end up needing to do it or for whatever reason um, it's, it's not a priority or it's just not happening anymore, you need to delete it. You can uh, click on any item and delete it, but if you did that by accident, you can go down to the bottom of the screen and it will show Recycle Bin. And that's where you can choose to view this box that's kind of floating here over on the right. And it shows you all of the items that you've deleted recently. So if you want to restore that item, if you did it by accident, you could click the green button restore and it'll put it back in the spot that it previously was on your board. Um, so that way you don't have to worry if you if you delete something by accident, it's not gone forever. I don't use that feature very much. Um, even ideas that I, I've added and I'm like, oh, am I ever going to do it? I'm very hesitant to delete it because I think, well, it might be a good idea. <laughs> so sometimes you never know. Um, but just in case, it's there. The last little thing I want to cover, um, obviously, as with a lot of things like Prezi, there are, there are a lot of other things out there where there, there's a free version and there's a paid version. So what's the difference? Well, I can safely say I've been using this for many years and the other librarians here use it and none of us have ever needed to use the paid version we don't pay for it we use the free version and it gets us everything we need um, a few things if you are curious about the paid version i've just listed on this slide a few of the things that um, might be selling points for you on a paid version you can attach files uh, if you're working collaboratively and you're sharing a board with colleagues, this might be an important one. Let's say you get an email and it's got documents attached to it. You need to share that with them when you give them the task or when you assign somebody else the task. The file attachment might come in handy. Uh, for me personally and for the other librarians here, we've never needed to use it. We can just email each other that document. So I'm not sure how necessary that would be for anybody, but it is it is an option a search you can it gives you a search where you can type in things and you can easily you know sort through your tasks that way instead of manually scrolling back and having to find something copy board task numbering a uh, time estimate report so the time estimate report would use things like your pomodoros that you've been keeping track of to sort of give a projection of how long um, a task would take you um, again, that's not something I really, I really need. Adding tasks by email, uh, integrating with your calendar feed and iCal, Google Drive and Dropbox integration. Um, you get priority support, so if you have an issue, you'll get support quicker than free people. I personally, and nobody I know that uses this has ever had an issue, so I've never even needed to contact support. But um, if, if you're working with a huge team of people, that may be something. Uh, and then forecasting, this is another thing It's similar to the time estimate report where it's going to give you a projection of what things are going to be like. And Excel and CSV exports, um, I don't do a lot with that, but some people may need it. If, you're, if you think that you're curious about it, um, be aware that there is a 14-day free trial to test everything out. So if it's something that you just want to see, it's not going to hurt to get your free trial and see if any of those, if you actually end up using any of those features. And if you don't, then you can continue to use the free version. Um, and if you choose to do it, it would be $5 per user per month, which is a pretty small fee, actually, for a lot of the, the online programs that are out there. Um, now I'm going to take the opportunity, looks like we have some a little extra time to go out and show you my board again. And we'll jump over to the board. So here's my board um, just for, oops, excuse me, just for 
showing purposes. I'm going to click on my timer down here just to show you where the Pomodoro timer is. since That's a big part of what I just talked about. So bottom left, the timer icon. Um, and this is how it works. You would select a task. So we're in progress with this webinar here. And I can click start. And it's going to start counting down. And when it reaches the end of the 25 minutes, it'll ask me if I want to keep going or if I want to take a short break. And I usually accept my break, <laughs> take that opportunity to go to the bathroom, get something to drink, and then come back and keep working. If you end up finishing something, you can always click change and you can select a different task. And let's say you want to change again, you can change back. You can also stop. Sometimes your boss may interrupt you, so you can see boss interrupted, colleague interrupted, email, phone call, web browsing. You can also add other reasons, and that way in your log later, I'm going to say boss interrupted me. Um, so when I look at my log, it shows me my Pomodoros from today, how many I've got, um, how long I've spent so far, and I can actually see what my reasons were. So successful Pomodoro, and just above it, I chose that I finished. Um, down here is where I just now selected boss interrupted. So if I was working on a project and I boss interrupted, I could choose that, and then when I return to it and I look back later, I can remember the reason why and see you know, how my workflow was related to that. And here's the settings that I mentioned. You can manage your interruptions, your sounds. And if you wanted to do this manually, this is where you would manually insert um, how much time you spent and what item you were working on. I'm going to close that. Um, this little sort of hamburger icon right here is where you can find some other tools. So you can choose to turn sound on and off, notifications on and off. Your color legend, you can see that that pops up my, my sort of color scheme at the bottom and removes it again. And then the recycle bin, which I showed you earlier. So this shows a couple of things that I had removed earlier today. And if um, if you're like me and you like to sort of give, you know, uh, explanations for things, I've also put little reminders to myself what kind of task falls into what category, and you can kind of scroll over and see that. This may not be helpful for everybody for an individual board like mine, but if you were working in teams with other people, this could really come in handy um, in case, you know, not everyone was around when the board was set up so they would know what tasks fall into what categories. And I just wanted to show you what it's like to create a new task. So this is a new task. And if I wanted to give it a description, I could give it a description. Um, you can add your color. I'm going to say this is a personal task. And I don't have anybody sharing my board, but if I did, this is where I would choose the person responsible. Let's say I want to finish this task by Friday at 5 o'clock and I want it in the done category. In case I wanted to repeat it every Friday, I could do that. And I can click Add. And you can add more than one due date as well. And this is going to be just my sample, just to show you how quick and easy it is to create a little list. So I'm working on this. Since I assigned responsible, it has my little face sort of icon up here. Um, I usually leave that blank. When you create an item, you don't always have to assign somebody. This is a little pointless since it's only my board, but just so you know what it looks like. And then as you finish it, you can check it off and move it over to done. And because I did recurring, you see this little icon here means that this is a recurring task. Um, so yeah, that's how you, how you set it up. When you go to delete a task, are you sure you want to delete it? Okay. And that's how you would delete any task. 
uh, and what I did there was I right clicked and I chose to delete. All right, um, that's about it. I think I'm I'm close to the the time where we'd like to do some questions. So I'm going to turn it over to. Hi. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Um, yes, we have quite a few questions. Everybody is pretty interested in this, so I'm gonna just start asking you some of them. I'm pretty sure that. Um, you you mentioned that the paid version includes integration with Google Drive and Outlook. Uh, everyone would like to know what system you use for email and calendar and how well does the free version of Kanban work with those systems? Um, I, I'm not great at answering this question. I do not use it. I have not integrated it with my Outlook. We do use Outlook here at UGA as our, our email and calendar system, um, but I don't have it connected in any way to my Kanban board. Uh, I personally copy things from my email over to my Kanban board, and that's, that's just how I work. Um, it is possible to work those together. Um, I, I've, like I said, I've never used the paid version myself, so I'm not sure how difficult or easy it is to get that set up, but I do know that it's possible. And probably speaking um, with somebody from Kanban, you'd be able to email them and ask them what the steps are, and you may even be able to find those instructions uh, on their website. And that's a great question. Um, if, if you aren't able to find those answers and you'd like me to help you find those, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I've got my email up here. Feel free to email me if I don't fully answer your questions or you're having trouble finding answers that I, I don't have at the moment. Um, please feel free to email me after the presentation and I'll help you out. Okay. Um, I think that we already know that you can't answer this. Um, Susan asked if you use swim lanes and I think that that's part of the paid version so it is that is a part of the paid version um, okay. if you go to kanbanflow.com and you're not logged in you will be able to navigate through um, just to see what some of their features are and it has a good explanation as to what things like swim lanes are Swim lanes, my understanding is that it's it's a great tool if you're working in a larger team of a few different people sharing the same board, that would be something that you that could really probably benefit you. Um, I just use my board for myself and my colleagues who use it as a team. They they only use those two columns. So we're using it in a, a pretty small capacity as far as what Kanban flow is capable of. So it's definitely possible. And if you're working in teams, you should definitely check it out. Uh, and I, I highly recommend doing the 14 day free trial. That would at least let you know, let you fool around with it and see what swim lanes are all about. And if it, you know, if it's worth the money for your, your team. Okay. Um, Sharon would like to know, um, if everyone that you share with has to have Kanban flow as well. To share with them. Um, to share with them. So I'm assuming we mean them participating in your board. Mm -hmm. um, so when you, this is a good opportunity for me to jump back out and share my screen and I can show you what it's like. So here, your top right, I, I mentioned this earlier in the presentation, but a lot of your settings are going to be your top right where you go to administration. And you can go to users. And this is where you would invite a user to share your board. Okay. They are, if they don't already use Kanban Flow, this would be like uh, inviting them to be a part of your blog, for example. You invite them, they will get an email, and Kanban Flow will ask them to join, um, and it will prompt them to create an account for themselves. And immediately when they create an account, they will have access to your board. Okay. And you can also, you know, you can use more than one board. So you'll see up here, um, if I go back to my work board, I could have a personal board separate from the board that I share with team members. So they would only be able to access the board that you give them user access to. Okay. So there were several questions about managing tasks. Um, 
Susan wanted to know, are you able to put a task in any column without having to move it from one column to the next in order? Yes. Okay. I think I understand that question. <laughs> you I think can create, I do too. <laughs> you can create a new task at the top of any task. You can also right click to create a new task. So if I just wanted to add a bunch of ideas, I can I can create a task and save it here. Then I can go over to this and create a new task and save it here. Anytime you create tasks, one of your um, administration settings is where do you want new tasks to appear? And there you can choose if you want it to appear at the top or the bottom of any given column. I have mine set to appear at the top of a column. Um, so, so yeah, that, I hope that answers the question. And okay. once you've created a task in any column, you can always, you know, drag and drop. Oh, change my mind, that one's done. You know, you can, it's really easy to drag and drop, but you can create them in any column. Okay. Um, Tamika would like to know, can you make multiple copies of tasks, i.e. if you have the same task to do for four different libraries? Um, that, that one's a good question. I believe you can do copy here. There you go. So you click on your task, you right click on your task and you would choose copy here. And it will it will create copies of that task. Then you could go in and just make edits. I could say for AA LL if I was doing the same webinar for a different organization. Okay. And if I made too many, I could delete. And so there I have a duplicate task um, that I just edited slightly. And you could go through and, and really duplicate over and over really quickly this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, Linda asks if this is something that you log into or does it just appear on your desktop? This is something that you log into. Um, I have created uh, bookmarks in my favorite browsers on all the different computers that I use. I've also created shortcuts to it um, on my phone. I've got a little icon where I've created a shortcut to get to Kanban Flow. Um, I've got icons on my desktop where I can just click on it as you would as an application, but it will automatically open the web page and open my board. Um, I have found that unless I completely restart my computer, if I reopen Kanban Flow, even if I have closed it before, I don't have to re-log in every time. It only prompts me, at least on my computer, to re-log in if I've completely shut down my computer. It, okay. it usually recognizes me. So. Okay. I think that answers the question about whether or not there's an app for using this on your phone. Uh, I personally don't have an app on my phone. The last time that I checked, um, the solution was to create a shortcut, but that may be dependent on the type of phone you have. I just saw someone in one of the comments, I feel like I saw somebody say, I just downloaded the app and it works great. So there okay. may be an app available depending on the type of phone that you have. Uh, definitely check into it. Um, but it's just as quick and easy to create a shortcut icon on your phone as well. And that's the one that I use and it's really quick for me to open it in a meeting and add items. Okay. This is an interesting that, uh, question that came in after a, a couple of questions ago. If you invite someone to share your board for a project, can you uninvite them after the project is over? Yes. So whoever invites them, let me go back out and share my screen and I can show you again. When we go to administration in the top right and you're under that user settings, you can always remove a user. And I'll show you, um, I'm going to add a I'll add myself <laughs> for a different email address. So, and this is great to test out too. If you're thinking about doing this, you know, definitely test test with yourself as another user. It sent the invitation. You can always go in and cancel the invitation. If they have accepted the invitation and they are moved up here to a user, there will be actions available over here that say delete user, and you can remove that user okay. at any time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then really quickly, I'm, I really apologize to everybody that we haven't had time to get through all of your questions because they're great questions today. It's just, um, you know, this is really interesting and there's a lot to talk about. 
Um, so Tamika wanted, this will probably be the last question we have time for. Tamika also wanted to know if you're working in teams, do you get a notification when a new task is added to the board? Um, that is a good question. Since I personally do not use my board for teams, I can't speak to a definite yes or no of that. Um, I can get back to you and by email and let you know, um, and I can ask my colleagues how that works for them because they do add new tasks for each other all the time. Um, I suspect that you can set it up to give you email notifications because even with the recurring tasks that I showed you, um, which will send you email notifications if you pass a deadline, for example, you can always turn that feature off. So I assume you'd be able to turn that feature on for other things as well. But I'm sorry, I can't answer that specifically. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time. So if you could just give me a quick yes or, or no, just a, a quick number on this one, and then we'll close out. Uh, Doug wanted to know, how long did it take you to get Kanban Flow set up in a way that worked well for you? It took me about two weeks. Um, I first started using it just the default uh, columns, and it took me a few weeks to discover that I could, you know, categorize with colors and things like that. So I, I would say two weeks. Um, and you guys, since you've listened to this presentation, you've got a little more knowledge going into it, so it shouldn't take you that long. A lot of these things that I presented to you today, uh, I learned over the course of those two weeks. Um, so now that you know it already, if you wanted to jump in, you know, um, you shouldn't be missing any any tools uh, that I didn't talk about in the presentation, and it should be really quick to get the hang of. Okay, well, thank you so much for speaking to us today about this topic, and thank you all so much for attending today. The archive will be available on our website within the next few days. We'll email you when it's available. After leaving the session today, you will be directed to a survey for assessing today's webinar. We hope you'll take the time to complete the assessment as your feedback is really important to us. If you have an idea for a topic or presenter for future webinars, please let us know. You'll see all of our email addresses at the bottom of the slide, or you can put your ideas into the survey. So again, thanks so much, and everybody have a great day.